How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to repair a faulty seam. This video is brought to you and sponsored by Tools for Flooring and EJ Welch. Tools for Flooring is America's number one online store for all of your flooring supplies and tools. Click on the card to check them out. If you guys have been following my videos, you know that whenever I stretched in this room, we have a seam about 18 inches off of this wall. There's nothing wrong with the seam at all. However, for the sake of the video, we're going to fold it over, take the seam apart and put it back together and stretch the room completely in to make it just as it is now and show you guys step by step how to do that. So to get this carpet lifted up and folded back like I needed, I'm going to take my carpet all and I'm just going to poke it right into the corner here and turn it sideways and pull up on it. That way I'm not going to damage the carpet. I can simply pull that right back out and you can never see where I even done that. These carpet awls are great and handy tools since they are skinny and a solid tool. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my carpet all the way back. Uh, maybe, maybe about a foot and a half or so about that far past my seam. So I'll have plenty of room to work with it and get it cut apart and put back together. Okay, that's going to be plenty good right there. You can see a little burning on the back of that, but nothing is actually burnt through or any damage on it. So everything right there looks good. Now to take this apart, I'm going to do something a little bit different than what most people don't do. A lot of guys will take their seam iron and run on the back of it to release that glue. I've got a little different technique that I do that I feel is a little bit safer and less messy, okay? I'm going to take and just heat up the tape on the back with my heat gun and it'll just pull right off all nice and neat and clean without causing any damage to the carpet or any mess with the glue. It takes just a second, just like an iron would, just a minute to get it warmed up and then I can start pulling it off slowly just approximately as fast as I can with the iron and again it is definitely a lot less messy so it's already starting to come there we go so now I have a just a nice little you'll see I'll just hold it right there and continue to pull as I'm heating from the back get this caught up with my paper here go ahead and see now this is why it is so not messy I can stop now I've got a nice good grip here without touching the glue or anything like that and I can carry right on just like I was Okay, we got it all uh, took off. What I did when I got about a foot from the end, just because the wall was here, I cut it off and I started pulling from this end and went this way away from the wall to get the last little bit of it there. But as you can see, everything rolls up really nice. You don't make a mess with the glue. You don't have any issues with burning the edge of your carpet or anything like that. What I'm gonna do is just come through here now anything that might be of a little hindrance that's loose or anything like that I'm just going to pull off the excess tape if it's loose if it's not it's not going to hurt anything and everything seems to be stuck there's just a couple little pieces here and it seems to be stuck really well so I'm going to just grab one side and we're going to work it right apart if it pulls apart good and it looks like it might going to be just pull apart there if I get a little rough spot like right here I am going to cut it I don't want to tear my backing on the carpet apart or anything like that so just want to cut that adhesive 
from the thermoplastic and the cool glide. Again, I don't want to destroy the backing. I want to keep it as whole as possible because our goal is not to cut out no more than we have to whenever we're doing this. Whatever we cut out, we're going to have to stretch that much more to make up, okay? Now, this was already stretched super tight, as you guys probably seen from my other video when I stretch this in. I definitely get manufacturer's tolerance out. So this is all good, and this is all good. Now I'm ready to get my uh, placement, get my tools, and get this row cut again, and put it all back together. What's good about this is uh, because there was carpet tape already on here, seam tape already on here, I want to get a good close look at this right here. You can already see, uh, or you can still see, rather, seam tape stuck in the backing right here. So we don't really have to worry about this falling apart or anything like that while we're working with it because it's, it's still got that tape. It's just holding everything. It's bonding everything really well together. So whenever we make our cut, we don't have to be too particular about it falling apart or anything like that before we get it sealed. This is going to hold together really well as we cut it and stick it back together, okay? Now that we've got this seam all cut apart, pulled apart, and everything like that, we're going to go about it now just like we was traditionally uh, doing a carpet seam. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this corner over like so, row my, uh, run my row in it, get it row cut. I'll fold this piece over and do the same thing to my other fill piece over there. Again, we're now pull that out just a little more. Now we are going to treat it like a traditional carpet seam. I'm going to go ahead and cut it, seal it, and everything. Uh, as I stated a while ago, we want to take the minimum amount off of this that we can because we're also taking some off of that. If we can get by with taking a quarter inch, just a couple rows off of this, a couple rows off of that to get rid of the defective part in the seam, by all means, that's all we want to take off. Again, because whatever we cut off here, we're going to have to make that much up in a stretch, okay? So we want to take off the least, the absolute least amount as possible. So I'm going to go, uh, looks, looks like about two rows right here is what I'm going to try to get off of here. Once again, I am using the same blade on the same side so I can recreate the same gauge, okay? I used the blade on the right side of my cutter this time. Uh, when I just cut this, I'm going to use the blade on the right side of my cutter to cut this one. I'm going to flip it over and get me a new blade, but I am going to use the same side. And again, what that does is recreate the same gauge that the factory has whenever they make the carpet, okay? Now, same thing on this side. I'm going to just take off two rows of carpet right here just the bare minimum so that I'm not causing a huge gap on the edge wall. And again, I've done this numerous, numerous amount of times and most of the time this right here will work. Sometimes you do have to cut out the whole section of the seam and add to your fill piece, but most of the time this works. I'm holding right here on my little uh, two row piece and I'm just kind of putting pressure back this way as I'm pushing with this hand right here. That just keeps this from getting bunched up and loose and causing issues with my cut as I'm making my cut. So just keeping tension on it because it's just a couple rows makes it cut a lot smoother. I'm not pulling hard. I don't want to rip it apart or cause my carpet to wrinkle up and jump a row or something like that. I'm just keeping a steady tension on it. See here? Okay. Once again, we got our nice two rows right here. Nice clean cut on both pieces. Time to put some sailor on these and put it right back together and we'll see after that how much of a gap we have right here 
and how much more we're going to have to stretch. So let's get them sealed and put back together. So you might notice a few strains here and there along this far edge of the carpet so that I'm not dealing with those whenever I'm making my stretches back up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cut those off. I'm, I don't know that I'm going to be able to stretch up enough to actually stretch it, trim it, and tuck it in there. So I might just stretch it up enough to tuck in there and be good. So because of that, I want to go ahead... I'm going to go ahead and trim off all this stuff that's on the edge that we don't want showing after the job is complete. So any of these strings or loose fibers or anything like that, we're going to take care of those right now so we're not dealing with them when we're tucking our carpet or after the carpet is already tucked. I want to point out I am definitely since this was already trimmed and tucked everywhere the carpet is exactly flush on that wall and on this wall well almost flush it is what it was packed what it was tucked in there so there ain't a whole lot up on the wall so i definitely don't want my carpet to shift any this direction whenever i make this first stretch so i definitely want to have my carpet stretchers at a really good angle so i can stretch directly up to this corner without this carpet pulling away this direction. So notice the angle of my stretchers. They're almost, almost corner to corner, lacking about three foot over there. So this does have an adjustable headpiece on it. So therefore I can turn my headpiece. I'm actually pulling straight, but with the angle of the stretchers, I'm not pull, it's not going to pull away this direction as I make my stretch, okay? So this swivel head is a huge, huge help, okay? And we're going to be able to get plenty, plenty of stretch here. I will have enough to trim and tuck it. It's looking like it might be just perfect once. I let go of the stretchers, it might just be exactly what it needs. I think that's probably going to be, probably going to be the case. So that's going, that is, it's going to be dead on right there. That's going to be exactly what we need. So hooray for that. Really happy about that. Not going to have to try to trim the, uh, tiny little edge after it's already been tucked in the edge is all loose and stuff that's why you've seen me trimming up some strings on it and stuff the edge has already been battered from beat down into the gully once pulled back up and now it's going back so that edge is already a little bit little bit uh beat up so if i try to trim that off with my trimmer even my carpet knife 
it's going to be a little bit troublesome because it's already the backing is already kind of beat up a little bit so if you don't have to do nothing with that the the better you're going to be do notice that i am still using my same tools there to crease it down in there my taylor easy tuck and my traditional stair tool to make everything good. Get it to stick good and then my stair tool to tuck it in there. Okay. So we was probably, uh, we'll actually look right up here how much we got before we complete this stretching to see how much we had to cut out. If you'll come right up here and look at this, we'll see how much that we had to pull off. So you can see from the backing to the wall how much we actually had to cut for our seam and how much we are stretching back. So that's probably three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch right there that we're having to stretch and that we took out because two rows and two rows is probably in this in this carpet probably about that much so that's why we definitely wanted to only take two rows and two rows off of two rows off one side and two rows off another side if we had to went any further we would have been on back here on the back side of the tack strip which obviously would have been harder to get stretched up there so that's the importance of only getting the minimum amount whenever we was cutting our seam off. This is a super good set of stretchers. Probably the best there is out there. And you guys can pick those up. And this awesome crane carpet knife right here. You can also pick it up. And you can pick up this Taylor Easy Tuck right here at Tools for Flooring. Again, they are the America's leading number one online shop for all your tools and supplies the seaming system i got you can get that there all your seam tapes your thermoplastic seam sticks your seam ceiling uh, peak buster all that stuff you can get at one place you don't have to shop the whole internet to find the things you need tools for flooring has it all okay <laughs> I don't want to get too much to where I have to trim it up there. I can already see that I'm going to have to. But for the most part, I want to get this pushed up just enough to tuck it in there again and make sure that it's stuck on the strip. Okay, so I pulled up about to right here. So this is where I need to start stretching and get all stretched back up there. Get it put back on the strip and tucked back in there. Okay, looks like I probably will be trimming some of this. I don't know though, it is my exterior wall, so the baseboards are up on this wall. Might be just fine. Either way, just whatever I gotta do to make it work. Whether I gotta trim some or just straight tuck it, don't really matter. As long as it gets stretched back up there properly and stuck on the strip like it should be. We are gonna be good. Well, even though I was talking about not getting a crazy stretch, you can definitely see I'm still getting plenty of stretch on this where I'm not going to be worried about it wrinkling up over time. It's still, 
am getting more than enough stretch to, to be satisfied with it, to make it last a long, long time still. Okay. I think we're going to be good. Just tucking that. And it looks like everything is working out just fine. If the baseboards were not raised up, I would not be able to do that. It would just look all all mashed up and just look awful. But because the baseboards are raised up on this exterior wall, I am able to do that. Because the extra carpet will simply tuck underneath of the baseboard instead of just getting mashed up, mashed down and wadded up in my gully. Okay. Looks good. We now have our seam is repaired, put completely back together. If a person walked in here before and after the job was even done, you would not even know that there was anything had ever happened here. That is the results we're looking for. Once again, do all your one-stop shopping at toolsterflooring.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, FBSB's out.